It's more confusing than inception Harder than an erection It's cooler than Andre 3000 Oh, let's get ready for Sweet Connection Hello and welcome to Sweet Connection. I'm your host, Kat. With me today is Jason Lewis. Bloody hell, did Jason, you squeeze your testicles how are you doing? <laughs> doing that? How are you doing, Jason? I'm alright. It's late. I'm tired. It's not that late. It's only ten past nine on a Saturday. Late. Is that late for you? Late. I've got a beer so and a tea. Be- <laughs> that sums up my... So when you become a parent, does your definition of late shift? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, this is late for me all the time, but uh, yeah, this is late. This is... Yeah. Okay, so what time do you go to bed? Now? So I normally do after bedtime around about eight, and uh, I often go to bed as well <laughs> about eight. But then you're up earlier in the morning. So are you getting the same amount of sleep? I don't know. It depends. Sometimes you'll wake up, up during like, the night. Yeah, sometimes you'll wake up a couple of times. But, night, okay, but. but in theory, if they slept through the night, has your clock just shifted to? Go to bed early, but wake up early. I'm, so it's still the same eight hours, think, or is it a little bit? Is it still different? It's, no, I think it's still eight hours. To be fair, I think what I've got good at is um, waking up in the morning. Because sometimes you know you go to bed. Like I can go to bed at one, two in the morning and wake up at six. Whereas before, if I'd go to bed at like one, two in the morning, I'd wake up at like eleven. Yeah, I mean, I'm not too bad at that now. I mean, I literally I went to bed at like one o'clock last night, and I was up at like Ooh, half six, I, and I was up at half six to. To go kayaking this morning, so still doing that, um, yeah. yeah. All right, you still yeah. lobster potting? Uh, no, I'm I'm not potting. But uh, when I went out kayaking today, I went out with three of my mates, and uh, of course, what, you did. well, just say thanks for the invite. Go no, on, because so. I wouldn't go kayaking. Exactly, I don't it want was to exercise. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing, oh, wow. because. Because um, my friend went in my uh, spare inflatable kayak, which oh, I've said, friend. which I've said many times, is uh, unsinkable. And uh, we were kayaking, and it was quite choppy out there. And I happened to turn around, and <laughs> and the kayak was overturned. The oar was pissed off, and he was just like was in it? in the water. <laughs> my friend from my new work. Oh, oh um, friend! Oh, and, uh, friend! Oh, and so, uh, and so, ever, after, and, ever. and so, I was just like, okay, I better. I better paddle over to him because, <laughs> like, he said that. I'll let him die because <laughs> he said that. I have to do his work because he said that he he tried to shout, but because obviously the North Sea quite cold, I think he might have had cold water shock because he was saying that he was trying to shout, but he couldn't make any fucking oh my noise. God. Now, fortunately, like we were quite close to the beach, so I got him on the kayak, so he could get his breath back. You rescued him. Well, again, from forty yards out from from the beach, so I'm sure he would have probably survived anyway. <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe don't come out on that kayak. Uh, as I no. said because so far someone has capsized it. But uh, anyway, how you been doing the past few weeks? We haven't done a show in a while. Yeah, it's been Thanks a while. Fuck isn't it? for that. Yeah, to be fair. Um, so, what's happened to you in the past few weeks? Um. So that's about it, really. So anything else? <laughs> I generally could. I went to the pub. I went to the pub. I went to the pub for the first time in Pub's a while. Right in it, to be fair. Yeah. Which, have, which pub did you go to? I went to the Dooley. I went to the Dooley did last you? night oh. after work. It's nice there, isn't it? Yeah, very nice in Dooley. Got a good garden. No, yeah, very nice beer do garden. Do like a beer garden. Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah, because now in the UK, pubs are open, but you have to be seated outside. Yeah. So you can't go inside. So if a pub doesn't have a seating area outside, they can't open. No. Um, Not for I a drink few beer Moretti. That's oh, yeah. my beer of choice. That's quite now. a posh beer, isn't it? Yeah. It's not cheap. It, yeah. It doesn't really suit you, I don't think, that posh beer. All oh, right. Although, to be fair, you wearing the shirt you're wearing now, you, you do look like a bit of a Tory boy. So... A bit of a a bit of a conservative. You don't like what I'm wearing, do you? So we'll start off from the bottom of my outfit. Uh, I'm no, wearing no. socks with sliders. No, I'm I'm fine with you wearing socks and well, okay, I'm not fine with you wearing socks and sandals. But I've become not so sandals. They're sliders. I've become, so, a I've become so used to it that that doesn't even you know socks on my radar. Is fine, but the fact sandals that I'm you're wearing a a white, a blue, and pink striped t-shirt, you look like a beach hut. I don't know what that says. Do you know I, what that says? No. <laughs> Funny yeah. enough, it might say beach hut. That looks like a bee. <laughs> you do look like a beach hut from the 1960s. That's fine by me. Um, <laughs> and I'm wearing a pair of white shorts, which, which have got burger with sauce With some burger on sauce them. on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Funny thing is, we I went clothes shopping. Last night. This, is, this is something that we've done. I went burger shopping. <laughs> no, I didn't go burger. I went, we How went, high was your voice then? I come from you for the intro. <laughs> um, we went clothes shopping uh, Thursday, the day of Thursday. So we went clothes shopping. 
Um, and that I picked sounds, up that, these. I mean, for a day off, for me, that's a fucking, that's a shocking day off. Yeah. I, I hate clothes shopping. I also went out on a cycle. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the invite. You haven't got a bike. I used to with bikes, didn't I? Should we go out for a cycle together? I'll go out with you on a no, cycle. No, thanks, I'm alright. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> um, but I picked up these white shorts. Ben, I first. I might only... capsize the bicycle. What is it? Thursday was two days ago. Two days ago. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, two days ago. Fuck you know, he's. So I picked up these white shorts, <laughs> and Cassandra goes to me, You're not buying them because you'll. The first thing you'll do is eat food and stain them. I went, No, I won't. It'll be fine. I, I'm, I'm going to buy them. She said, No. I told me to put them back on the shelf. I put them back on the shelf. And she turned you, around. You I put them in the basket. <laughs> um, and that was Thursday. So the next day, Friday, I wore them. Um, and we had dinner. I think it's getting bolognese. Stained them. That's the worst dinner to And have, um, she goes, white. what did I tell you? And I said, yeah, yeah. Wash them with stain remover. Got that stain out. <laughs> Thought I'd wear them again today. And I spilled burger sauce on them. So I've worn them twice and stained them twice. I've never owned white shorts. No, because you shit yourself. I was about, but uh, because I do shit with, and I did actually have a little accident. <laughs> Not a major one. I just farted and it was a little bit wet, it, and I was just you're like, so open about how often you shit yourself. Pants. Well, it's not not it's not proper shit. That it's just like you know, you go for a fart and then you think, oh, that was wet. I need to go. Any form of poo coming out of you when you're not supposed to is bad. Okay, well then you I can't suppose... shit away. Oh, I just right. got a little bit of poo. <laughs> It's only a little bit. Right, question. Go on, when you wipe your bum, yeah. when do you stop? Um, I don't know. Why when, is it taking when, you, when, like, why is I it mean, taking what you a question. To I, this is not what the podcast was created for, Jason. I, I wipe when it's an appropriate amount to stop wiping. Where there's no, we're not talking about this. There we go. We're, we're I thought, talking about when there's this. no poo left. Yes. I thought you were going to go, I don't know, two or three times. <laughs> no. Right, um, good. We're not talking good about boy. this. No, we are above this level, Jason. I don't think we are. I think we are above this level. Um, we we'll do one show a month and you think we're above that level. <laughs> All right. I asked you to do the show last week. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> At least one of us is trying in this relationship. <laughs> All right, Jesus. I know how Laura feels. <laughs> so, yeah, how's the pub then? All right, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I had a couple of beers. Who'd you go with? Uh, my wife and son. Thanks for the invite, but uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't invite me anymore. Have we had the show since we since you came to us? Probably not. No, we? that was my birthday. Yeah, so that would have. No, we didn't. No, oh yeah, yeah. So and yeah. my birthday was like twenty days ago. Yeah, yeah. Cause it was about a month of the last show. So yeah, you came yeah. to you came around here. You brought your son. Yeah, he left one and of my his wife. To- and your wife. And I, I was getting to that. I was going to say that he left a toy which you've currently got on the fucking desk. I'm holding it. Yeah, yeah. Please don't. He loves diggers. And yeah. this is a wind the digger up. A wind and it up winds digger. Ben up. Yeah, because it's going to interfere with the sound, isn't it? So, and we are literally doing an audio. Please stop. Fuck it. Huh? Stop that. All right, you've had your fun. Put that in. <laughs> There'll be no more fun left in this podcast <laughs> for you. That's your quota. Anyway, um, sorry. So, I mean, if uh, we've been lucky that for the past month or so, we've been allowed to have people round in the garden. It's been quite yeah. nice weather in the UK. Yeah, not as nice as last year's lockdown, though, was it? The first lockdown. First lockdown. This time last was year. Nice. Was nice. When yeah. it was, like, hitting 30 degrees. Yeah. But, you know, it is still spring, so we are getting into summer now, mm. aren't we? And oh, stuff. Yeah, well but, done. Uh, yeah. I had a barbecue. I had friends over. I invited <laughs> oh, you, you to that barbecue. barbecue. I couldn't make it. So yeah, you, I couldn't make you it. You can't make that In joke. fact, I didn't even tell you I couldn't make it. I just forgot didn't I did you no you said you couldn't do it no I never said I couldn't I was looking over a conversation the other day actually oh and you just never and replied. I just never replied okay alright fair enough I'm uh, one of those people Ben no <laughs> in fairness you're actually one of the better people who reply to stuff oh, yeah. right because I, I find it irri- yeah tell me about it I find it irritating when I text someone and it takes them four days to reply. If someone messages me, my phone is always within about a meter of me, yeah, yeah, whether same. it's on charge or not. So if it goes off, I look at it, I then reply. So mm. I don't understand people where you know. Or you know what gets what really gets me when someone phones you, you just miss them, you phone them back, they don't answer. Oh, I hate it's that. Like, oh, what? So I hate you, that. Oh, so what? Much. So you just called me and then just fucking threw your phone over the fence, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, he's still me. Jesus. Yeah. But um. Whenever my dad phones me, I ignore it. <laughs> Whenever he, he always phones me at those inconvenient times, always when I'm working or you know other stuff, um, and I will leave it like an hour, and I'll phone him back. He goes, "Oh, you busy?" Like, yes, yes, dad, I was dad. at work. 
I've got a full time job and a wife and a child. Okay, mm. I'm very busy. Very busy. Um, what was what was something else that he phoned me about? He likes to phone me to moan about other people in the family, and I'm like, all right, Dad, I don't care. All right, Dad. I think yes, that Dad. the day that he stops phoning you about that is the day where he's moaning about you to someone in your family. Funny thing, like, I don't give a fuck about my family. <laughs> Nice, there we go. Well, that's, that's a nice family-friendly message there. Mm. But, uh, yeah, that's good. This probably shouldn't make the cut. I'm just saying this out loud now. Uh, I think quite a lot of them could make the cut. But um, I'll say it off the record. There was that week where the guy from Friday Night Dinner died, and Prince Philip died, yeah, and my uncle died. Did he? All right. I okay. was more sad about Prince Philip <laughs> and the guy from TV. Well, there we go. That's going in. But, uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> I can edit that out. Anyway, we're, we're, isn't that sad about Prince Philip's death? Not really, because he was 99 and a racist, so I yeah, don't care. Yeah, but he was a funny racist. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, he, he, was, <laughs> he was pretty... He was witty to the point where he could say a racist remark, but I think even the people he was offending thought it was funny because the he's just that... problem is... He's, he's that... He's 99. Yeah. Do you expect a 99-year-old to know all the uh, appropriate terms for different and ethnicities? And also, you know, he's, he's Greek and all that sort of stuff, so he's not that racist. Um, my favourite one was the Filipino... Yeah, Philippine, but he's still white, the, though, isn't he? The Filipino one. Did you, have you seen that one? What one? Where um, he was meeting NHS... I mean, it's not actually... I don't think he actually meant this in an offensive term. Well, of course, I don't mean it as an offensive term. But... Um, he was shaking hands and he was like with the doctors, oh, and where are you from? And the was like, the Philippines. He's ah, oh, the Philippines. There must be none of you left in the Philippines. You're all here helping us. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with that's, that, that's is there? That's not offensive. No. I mean, that's but, good. It means that they've come over. To... Yeah. You know me, though. I'm quite the royalist. Yeah. And and I've watched I, a lot and of I'm, Prince I'm, Philip documentaries. And, and I'm quite the Republican. I want to abolish the royal family. That's what I want to speak to you about. Go on, just, then. Just, everything's just whizzing around. I'm all glad through, he's dead. Walking, so can't, whoa. I'm joking. Can't, can't, God. That poor woman has spent 70-odd years of her life with that man. Yeah. At least. Well, she met him when she was 13. We won't go into the monty behaviour, because he was 18. Um, but, yeah, that poor woman spent her whole life with that man, and now she's gone. He's gone. That poor woman. The most powerful woman on the planet. Oh, the poor woman. Yeah, but woman. she's also 95. How much power do you have when you're 95? I know she has a lot of power. But, Literally you know, the most influential woman in the world. Yeah, but on, but she's getting to that point where she needs help getting up the stairs, so... She's not no, that she looks pretty fit and strong to me. I would. I'm joking. I love the I love Anyway, talking about power, yeah. there's local elections going on at the minute. Yes, um, because we got some voting forms through. Yeah. I think you know what I'm going to talk to you about. No, I don't. I was I'm, walking through I, town I'm today them, yeah. and there was one person campaigning from the Felix Stowe Communist Party. What? Yes. That's amazing. I didn't know they existed. Yeah, there's a Felix Stowe Communist Party with the same flag as the Communist flag. So the what? red flag with like the, 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 the sickle and the hammer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That, I, sh- I shit you not. The Felix Stowe Communist Party. That's I just amazing. couldn't believe it. You Google it. Yeah. Or like Suffolk Communist Communist Party. And did you speak to them or? No, I put my head down and walked past it because I just wanted to talk to them. How many people? <laughs> Did she really tell Yeah, she wanted to give them a load of shit. I don't like confrontation. And she's very scary when she's confrontational. Suffolk sees return of the local communist party. Shit. But you know what? The guy who is called Mark Jones, he looks like a nice man. I mean, yes, he's a communist, but he looks like a nice man. Now, my history about the communist party and all that sort of stuff isn't great, but surely communist equals bad. Historically speaking, yes. So why is this a thing? Because... How is this allowed? Is this worse than UKIP? It's the other side of the other spectrum. Because like, so UKIP are far right. Communist is far left. So it's bad. Equally as bad, but in a different way. It's different. It's literally right, okay. as far as you can get. So communism is if one person earned a hundred thousand pounds and that person earned everyone 10, pounds. Everyone gets paid the same. They Ev- should be paid everyone gets same. paid the same. There's no more free elections. So literally, once you elect a communist party, that's the end of your elected parties. Your country's communist for life. Um, but this is just one part of the country, which is, I don't understand. If it got a like, sort right. of UK majority... Is it new, then? The communist party? No, is it new for Felix? Is it I, new I've for never the, heard of it. I've never heard of it in England. Of the Suffolk. Yeah, it's not really a thing that happens in England. Communism. I yeah. mean, so we're more far right, you know. We do like sort of UKIP and BNP and the EDL. We're not, we're not known for far left stuff. 
That's anyway, so that's what I saw today. Speaking there of politics, go. that's good. Are you going to vote for them? If they're on my on my voting register, I'll think about it. Um, but <laughs> I think uh, about putting no. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. I mean, about ten minutes ago, I was, I was talking about my barbecue before we start talking oh, yeah. about communism. But um, yeah, it was nice. It was uh, nice, nice weather. Obviously, I'm on the grill, so I'm cooking like a fucking yeah, like Gordon, Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, with a uh, lot. Um, there was no white spirits. White spirit, there, was, there was no white spirits. Thank God to get the barbecue going because you know, just, but just human remains. It was the first barbecue of this new barbecue, which is good. So that you was, excited for your new barbecue? That you're well, that's get. the thing. I've bought a house which got an inbuilt barbecue after I spent 170 quid on this barbecue that I've currently got. But I just have two barbecues, don't I? Last time we were on the show, you were slagging me off that I didn't sell your house. We'll get to the house. Right, that's, okay. that's clearly going to be a big topic we're going to be talking about. <laughs> After I talk about this, we'll talk about the house. But, um, yeah, only issue with the barbecue, right? So, 170 is that, quid. Yeah. Is that we all started drinking, we all got really drunk, and then about one o'clock in the morning they left, and um, one of them had brought some extra, some extra posh sausages, which, because I cooked too much food anyway... We didn't put them on there because we were stuffed. Oh, we but after they left, I was really hungry, and I was like, oh, I'm going to... I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the oven on, put the sausages in, and just eat six sausages by themselves. Uh, but then, because I was drunk, I uh, fell asleep, and then um, I awoke to the smell of smoke. Mm. And then, when I ran into the kitchen, which was um, you could barely see in the kitchen because it was full of smoke, the oven said five hours and forty-seven minutes. Uh, and we we've only just got the. The smell of burnt sausages out of the house. Did you smell it when you came I in last time? I smelled it when time? I came in the you next smell day. It, you it was smell the next it today. day, weren't it? Yeah. Oh, I couldn't smell it today, no. Yeah, yeah it's gone now. But um, that was... Fun. What I will say is, is, Ben, what do you do with your smoke alarms? Um, we have one with no batteries because it keeps going off. We'll replace the fucking battery then. It keeps going off. Yeah, I wonder why. You keep burning fucking sausages. <laughs> if you'd have died, because that was... All right, that was two days after I sold your house. <laughs> If you'd have died because you fucking burnt the kitchen out for cooking sausages and I lost the sale, I would not have come to your funeral. It's sorry, it's sausages in an oven. Even though after I took the them out, they were they were not like sort of recognisable as sausages. They just looked, Did you try and eat one? No, because it was literally it melted into the baking tray. Oh, we'll just throw that away. That wouldn't have started a fire because literally it's in an oven. A thing that's designed to be hot. So there was no risk yeah, of a fire. Yeah, but if you'd have died and I've lost the sale. How would I have died? There was no know. risk of a fire, is there? Well, there could have been a fire. How? It's in an oven. Or you you ran into the smoke-damaged room, <laughs> fell and hit your head <laughs> and died. Okay, 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 that could have happened. Yeah, exactly. But so, anyway, the house. The so, house. Basically. I talk- can't believe you fucking... So what? Really- no, go back to the fire. There was no fire. How did you fall? Talk to me about falling asleep. Where did you fall asleep? On the sofa, and I was sitting straight up. <laughs> and you slept for six hours. For five sat hours up. and 47 minutes. And I was sat, and then literally I just did that thing where you're drunk and you go like, Hoo. and then I was like, instantly sewed me up. And I was like, oh, fuck. ah, better not tell Laura. Um, <laughs> but, where uh, was Laura? In bed upstairs. Yeah. Um, she didn't wake up because there's no fucking smoke alarm. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Anyway, obviously the big story, big story, the big breaking topic. news. Breaking news is that we have put a house on the market, which we talked about last time, and you finally sold it after what seemed fucking like a fucking hell. age. Finally sold it. I sold it twice. See, <laughs> okay, so let's go through that because we're moving house. Therefore, we saw a house that we liked, which mm-hmm. we wanted to put an offer on, but we needed to sell our house beforehand. Yeah. So um, we went to have a look at the house that we liked. We said, yes, this is the house that we're going to buy. So, uh, And we'd had several viewings for this house. Yeah. And I got a, a call from you saying, this investor oh, wants, so <laughs> wants to buy this. No, no, we'll get there. Wants to put an offer on the house, yeah. right? And so he put in an offer for a little bit less than what we wanted. Took a lot of negotiating, didn't it? But because it was a cash buyer yeah. with no chain, we thought, we'll take that, because that's a good offer. Well, before, and he made, I think, I think it was his fourth offer that finally got to an acceptable level. Third or fourth offer, weren't it? Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, so, so then we... So, yeah, so we, so literally, I said yes to that, first thing Monday morning. Yeah. And then, after we've done that, because now our house is sold, as far as I'm concerned, I then started making offers on the house that we wanted, and literally after a day of back and forth... 
at about half past five in the evening. You got it for 20 grand less? I got it for 20 grand less than the asking price. Thanks and I me. was... Sorry? Thanks to me. Well, thanks I to told you. you what to offer. I mean, that wasn't that far away from what I got. Okay, you know what? Fine. You know what? Take the win. Thank you. At about half five, I, they said yes. I called you. All excitement. I was I was happy. I was... I, I was could hear it in your voice. Hear my voice. I you called, were on the verge of tears. I called you. I called my dad. I oh, called fuck. my mum. Oh, I called fuck. my nana. Oh, fuck. All right. So, oh, fuck. and then at about six o'clock. After I, I phoned your buyer to say great news, they've had somewhere accepted. Even better. You then phoned me at about six o'clock and said, the buyer's just pulled out. You're not going to like me. Now, I have to say, for a, a good ten seconds, <laughs> I thought that was a joke. I was waiting for you to say, ah, I got you. <laughs> I got you. Uh. But you weren't. So the, the buyer had pulled out. So, so my, my But for that half an hour, I was happy, I was relaxed, I had half an hour of happiness, and then after that the universe decided that was enough for me. So the, my so uh, yeah, you phoned me at half five, so great news office been accepted like fantastic mate. I'm out on the viewing at the minute. I'll call your buyer when I'm back. Got back to the office and phoned him and he said, Oh, um, yeah, I was going to phone you. Uh, there's somewhere else we've decided to buy instead, so we've drawn our offer. And I said, I wanted to swear. And I said, Are you serious? Because you know we spent four days. It was pretty much it was it was four days of negotiating, weren't it? Because it was a Thursday when the first offer came in. Yeah. And the buyer and all that sort of stuff. So I put the phone down. Uh, went out the back. Had a little shout and a little kick of the treadmill that's out there. Um, <laughs> came back, phoned you. Um, so what was going through your just, mind? Well, I, you see, I, see, I because deal with like, this all day, every day. Because obviously I am a reasonable person and mm. I'm not going to get angry at, like, at you or anyone telling me bad news that's not mm. their fault. But I understand as a friend... As a personal connection that would it. it would be bad for you because, just because it's bad news. I think the thing for me was it was your phone call. I, I don't have people phone me to tell me their offer's been accepted. Yeah, but... And I don't I, have that because it's obviously yeah, we're a personal because connection. Because I have phoned you... And obviously that whole yeah. that excitement in your voice and I thought half an hour later I'm fucking ripping it away from you. Um, so it was my personal mission to make sure that we found you a better buyer. Um, did. And was it two days later? Because you, you're a state agent. Yeah, on the Monday, yeah, and yeah. then on the Wednesday, um, the people who had also viewed our house, who was always going to be seeing a mortgage advisor oh, that on sort of Tuesday, jazz. yeah, put in an offer on the Wednesday for two and a half grand more. And they're first time buyers. No, three and a half grand. More. Yeah, three and a half grand. More. Three and a half grand. More. Three and a half grand more, which um, covers my fee and more. <laughs> Thank fuck for that. But uh, I expect a discount on the fee for the fucking pain, fuck you, pain you put me through. You know what? On that Monday, how do you think I slept on the Monday and the Tuesday? I barely slept a wink. But then I on the, but then the on, big but, pile of empty carving cans in the corner. On the first night there was, I <laughs> felt like, fuck, um, this is shocking. But for, for two and a half days, you get three and a half three and a, more. In hindsight, and it is a lovely bad. thing. So now we are going through the process. We're, we are well underway. Um, well, you say you went underway. I haven't had any call about a survey yet from either of them. Well, not, either of you. I'm so not you need to have me up. Play it safe. And get a survey. No, no, my dad's doing it. Oh, your dad's not a fucking expert, is he? He's a civil engineer. Oh, does he want a fucking medal? <laughs> Woo, look at me. I could be civil. Doesn't civil do. engineer fixes cars, don't they? That's a mechanic. <laughs> what does what a civil engineer fix? Well, he is mostly involved with bridges. Right, okay. But there's no bridge at your house, is there? <laughs> No, but like structural abnormalities. Right, and so stuff. this is just to change the topic now. It's not changing the topic. There's nothing I hate more. Has your dad been on a viewing with you yet? No, but. There's nothing I hate more when someone brings their parent to a viewing because the dad always argues with everything I have to fucking say. say. <laughs> and it's just like, get, shut up, sort of thing. <laughs> like, we've done one, and um, what was it? What was it? And it had electric, it had electric panel heaters in there. And if you look at... Is that good or bad? Uh, uh, this is the touchy subject. If you look at storage heaters, they store heat overnight and release heat out during the day. Yeah. So you have to almost plan in advance when you want the heating on. These new electric panel radiators, which are brand new, you press a button, heat and it comes heats out. Yeah. And uh, I always said on the view, and he's like, well, obviously these are more eco-friendly because they're more modern and they don't use much electricity. And he's like, no, no, you're wrong. I was like, oh, here we fucking go. And it's just, oh, just, I hate, I hate when people bring parents to the viewing. I hate it. I hate it so much. I yes. thank, thank God you're not buying from me. But fortunately, because we didn't have any person from the agents that we're buying from 
present at our two... Paul. Yeah, I mean, they're a fucking poor estate agent. I won't name them and shame them, but fucking hell. Wainwrights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but um, yeah, so so we basically did it ourselves. Mm. But then again, you say that's poor, but we had some viewing of this house where you weren't available, so we had to do that ourselves. I lied in to fact, you. <laughs> in fact, the people who bought our house, you weren't there for the viewing. <laughs> Actually, were you there for any viewing? Oh, yeah. You, yeah. Yes. I was there for the one that fell apart. You were there for the viewing where the guy broke my heart and oh, pulled wow. out. Yeah, it's not all about who does the viewings, it's about who sells it. Uh... Yeah, and I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, are I paying for you again for? You 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 pay an estate agent for the part after you find a buyer. That's oh, okay. I'm telling you. But you need to pull your finger out. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so yeah, hopefully it will be this some point this summer we'll be moving in. So that's exciting. So obviously we're now going for the whole thing about colour schemes and painting and blah 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 blah. But yeah, that's exciting. So we are looking forward to that. And uh, you know and hopefully by the time that we've moved in, uh the the UK restrictions will be laxer to the point where we can have people over. We need to have a house party oh, and, nice. and trash the house. Party. Yeah. And then just buy a new house. But no, this what? is it. This is a house I'll be dying in. I will make a promise that I'm Why? dying in it. Why? I don't want to... We have no, we have no if, need to... What if in 30 years' time, the kids are left home? What kids? You'll have kids. You're going to have kids next, aren't you? Laura's not too keen about having kids with us. You really. are, though, aren't you? I mean, one. I think... I'm not that keen. I, I mean, think... I've, I've hoped in my lifetime that will happen, but I'm, no, I'm not eager to do it you right see, now. You see, what's really funny is, is the two times that I've brought Arthur here now, uh, one was when he was a really small baby, and one was obviously a couple of weeks ago when he was running around the playing. Well, you know what I mean. Two notable times. I think he's only been here two or three times. You're very good with young kids. Yeah. Like when he was a baby, and you were you were pissed when he came around one time when he was a baby, and you were like cuddling and playing with him. As in drunk, not pissed. As in angry at you. Fucking piece of shit. Come on, every room. And there being a child here. <laughs> um, and and when he was around the other week, both of you were very very sweet with him. You two are going to have kids. You're going to have one and you're not going to stop. Or... Give me one and done. It's either one or zero at the moment. Well, you say that, then you'll have one and then you think, oh. Why do I want to have another one? They're so expensive. They're do, you not how, made. do you know how stingy I am with money? Mate, honestly, you'll love having kids because they're not. Why would I love it? Because they're not that expensive. Fuck me if I've had one. <laughs> Come on. They are they're expensive not that, though, not. aren't they? Over they're only expensive if you want fucking. You know, like Adidas tracksuit baby clothes, all that sort of stuff. I shit you not, I don't think we brought Arthur any, I want to say clothing. I don't think we've spent, <laughs> I don't think I've, we've spent, I think the most expensive thing I bought Arthur was today, and that was a pair of shoes that were 30 quid. Because really? when you have babies. Toys? No, because presents, people do it for you. People buy them for you. Um, you know, like his, Cot and all that sort of stuff. We got so we got a whole bedroom suite, which was a year old for free. But we got a cot that turned into a toddler bed. Oh, hold on! I bought his digger bed, but he loves diggers, so I had to, and that was one hundred fifty quid. <laughs> but we got like a cot which turns into a toddler bed. We got a wardrobe and a changing table and chest of drawers, all for free. Right? Mm. Loads of people when they have kids give away clothes because they get they obviously outgrow them really quickly, and then they just give them away, and they're all good quality clothes. They're not that expensive. Yeah. You'll love it. You'll have one, and then you'll think, shit me, we need another one to be friends with this one. I'm at that stage now. No, okay, here's the thing, right? Because Laura always wanted to have two. Yeah. Because her and her brother were quite like sort of close growing up, you know, quite like friendly. I grew up with three sisters. Our house was like a fucking war zone. So, so, two's so, the right amount. No, two is not the right amount, because most siblings hate each other growing up. So she is the exception to the rule, and that's great, but I have to say, like... There is a chance if we have two children, they're gonna fucking kill each other. No, they're just gonna kill you. Children hate other children, like they, they hate siblings. Mate, that is the standard rule. No, there are exceptions, but most... you'll have one, and then you want the other one. You want so if you have a boy, you want a girl. No, I don't want a girl um, anyway. Uh, the other, you will. I just want a boy. <laughs> no, but you will. Trust me. And then, and then, what you do is you have another if one, and that will be another boy. And it's a boy. I'm done. I'll be like Laura. I'm gonna. Be celibate. You're calling no, it what? Jason though, aren't you, man? We had a deal. <laughs> or at least his middle name be Jason. <laughs> if you have a baby, you're going to get it christened. No. Oh. Because neither of us believe in God. Oh, what, because you want to be their godparent. Yeah. I'll do it for that. Yeah, well, uh, we'll do what we've done. Not actually be christened, but what's it called? It's called a... a uh, it's baptism? called a... No, it's called a celebration of life. A in a ceremony. church. So they're not actually godparents. They're... 
Oh, is it some something. wanky? You came to Celebra- it. No, that was fine, but like, is it some weird wanky title? If we have any more kids, you and Laura have got parents. But we don't believe in God, either of us. Oh, it doesn't matter. I if, well, well, I've had, disagree well, fundamentally right. with that statement, but there well, we go. Arthur was christened because... All right, I'll, I'll explain the whole story to you now. Um, no, Arthur we, was christened. We haven't got to- All right. It's, 30, it's seconds. Take, right. 30 seconds. 30 right. seconds. Arthur was christened because he's named after my granddad. My granddad is called Arthur. Yep. Arthur had a, or my granddad has a church in Phoenixstow where all the family events happen. So all the weddings, all the christenings, all the funerals, all those sort of stuff happen there. If I can't name my child after my granddad and not do what he would have wanted, and if he was alive and, and, and yet we weren't going to get christened, even naming him after him, he'd be fuming. And I don't want to upset my granddad, even if he's dead. So we actually get christened for that reason. 30 seconds, done. Done. Okay. Thank you. And that's our show, everyone. So thank you everyone for listening. Um, stay safe. Uh, hopefully there is light at the end of the tunnel in regards to this <laughs> pandemic. If um, not, let's just jump off a bridge. Yeah. One that Ben's dad built, apparently. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> say thank you for listening. Uh, stay safe, wear a mask, and uh, we will catch you next time. Ciao. Goodbye. So, Jason, where can you get more Sweet Connection in your life? Well, Ben, we are on Facebook at Sweet Connection Podcast, and we're also on Twitter at Sweet C underscore podcast. So you can give us a like or a follow. And you can also find us on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Podbean. So if you enjoyed the show, you can give us a rating or a review or recommend to a friend. And if you wanted to email in a topic or a question or just say hi, it's the Sweet Connection at Outlook.com. Massive thanks to Kip and Carlisle Lawrence for all of our jingles. Thank you for listening and catch you next time. Sweet Connection. Yeah.